Welcome back to The Hot Seat. I'm your host, Diamond McClintock, and we're so excited to talk today about our Dickinson Gyms. We've come together to talk about people on campus who are doing exceptional things in our community and the greater community. With us is Brittany Barker, a previous host on um, our Hot Seat. All right, so just to get it started, can you guys introduce yourselves? Sure, uh, my name is Coleman Bass. I'm a senior here at Dickinson College. Um, I'm, a, I'm a biology major, and um, I'm really trying to utilize ways that the liberal arts education gave me to see the world in a broader perspective and kind of uh, you know, get a perspective on different backgrounds and, and different ideas and make together a, a new foundation that, that changes things. And I'm Grayson Gilbert. I'm a senior at Towson University and I'm a communications major, and we, me and Coma Bass, along with some of the Dickinson community, have just created a nonprofit organization involved with connecting children to their idols. Um, so to tell you a little bit more about this foundation that we started only a few months ago, it's called the Inspirational Medicine Foundation, and really our goal is to connect children with heroes. Grayson's story is really inspirational in itself. He was one of the first medical recorded cases in history of pancreoblastoma, um, at Hopkins and his, and his story is truly an inspiration to us all. So really we're trying to recreate almost this amazing experience that he had and he's going to uh, talk about this in a minute um, and, and, and just explain how, how amazing this whole, this whole ordeal is. So the whole idea behind our nonprofit is that when I was a young child um, I had a very rare form of pancreatic cancer and Cal Ripken had heard about this because we had a connection through his family uh, and we had known his secretary. So he had heard that I had just been going through such a hard time in my life and he wanted to you know, help out. So he signed a baseball for me and it said, you know, Grayson, get well, my very wow. best. And I got that before my main surgery. And I mean, I was always a really positive child that, you know, had a main, a good outlook on things. I never really thought negatively, but I saw my friends in the hospital kind of like, you know, wonder why me and that this is like, I don't understand why this is happening. And for a child, you know, it's understandable, like, they don't understand why it's such a horrible disease is happening to them or why they have to spend their childhood in the hospital. So I got that baseball and it was like really positive motivation. Like, if Cal Ripken can believe it, then I definitely can believe it. So what we're recently doing is we're taking advantage of social media like Ubu or Skype and we want to use programs like that to connect children to their idols and so that way they can get a motivational video from someone they look up to and they can save that on their computer and you know show their friends and keep that throughout their whole time in the hospital and they use that as a motivational boost. And I think it's just a great way of using this new internet revolution to um, really just inspire children. How can we help people with all these great internet technologies? How can we connect people from anywhere in the world? It doesn't matter your location um, in, in a circumstance like this. It doesn't matter what sport team you could play on. You could be a Brazilian national star. You could be a European national star. We have interested students that are interested in bringing this to their regions, translating the Twitter account to a Spanish um, for South America and South Korea for, for South Korea. And, and uh, it's just really exciting to see the overall interest that we're gaining from the community. And, and the incredible thing about yeah. this technology is that, you know, a child's hero, the main thing is that they're so busy, you know, they have such, so many things going on in their life, and they can do, record a two-minute video from their home or, you know, on the road, and they can influence a child's life tremendously, and not only will they influence their self-worth, but they'll, they'll feel better about themselves, they'll increase their, self, their image, they'll, it'll do great things for the community all, mm -hmm. you know, all around, so... Mm -hmm. You know, just by doing this and connecting children to the hero could potentially, you know, like pay it forward kind Absolutely. of thing. Absolutely. And, and, and it's, 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 it's really, for the community. it's really also, it can be, you can manifest itself in so many different directions. Um, we're continuing to look at ways to potentially create a whole user interface that allows cancer survivors, a network that's, that's secure and really to connect and maybe go into chat rooms and stuff like that. Because I know um, something that people have been saying is, you know, you, a lot of times, if you're unlucky, I guess um, you, you could be diagnosed with something very serious, and it's very important to receive. Who else has this disease? Mm -hmm. Who else is, has gone through this? Who else knows um, what what can help me? And it's great to be able to in a comfortable network in within the hospital system. Mm -hmm. 
um, to connect. A system that kind of other children will be able to see another video that another person's made for another child and how that's influenced their exactly. life. Exactly. So that's the benefit it's of really kind of, kind of chat room. Almost that's what we're trying to work on now. Endless how far we want to go and, and what we want to do to, to create a better patient experience for children in the hospital and give them inspiration and even the the I want to say in some ways like the popularity they, they no one knows everyone wants you know sick children to get better and but I don't know that a small child is having a serious illness right now I just don't there's no way for me to know about that but if there was some way to me for me to know and and give my support and say hey uh, my next goal you know, I'm, a, I'm a Real Madrid player and my next goal is for you you know um, the next one I score is I, I you, you are amazing, you're battling this battle that's way harder than any game I've ever played. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I mean, you're, you're facing a challenge that none of us, uh, the Super Bowl is, an, is, is a small challenge compared to something that a 2% chance of survival when you're five years old is just... And hey, we're trying to kind of distribute a, almost a new kind of medicine in a sense. It's like a mental kind of medicine, you know? It's, um, if you, if a child can get that and mentally prepare for a surgery or, or going through such a hard time in his life and, you know, believe that he can do it, whereas, and usually if a child is going through that time in his life and wondering why, I mean, it's a, a, a hard, long road to recovery, but if he has that positive outlook, outlook then it's going to be a lot easier for him to believe that, and it's going to be a lot easier for his family, because they'll believe that his child believes that he can get through and that it's amazing to see how the mind can control the body. You Absolutely. Really, you really, if you do research on that, you really will be impressed with how incredible that works and I mm -hmm. truly am a believer of that. The mental aspect is just Absolutely. as important as the medicine. Mm -hmm. Now, how about, you said how this um, just came to like full fruition a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Why that time period? Um, I can explain a little bit about that. We, um, as a graduating senior, you know, I, I've always had an entrepreneurship type vibe. I've, you know, created my own web domains for various things and I always just wanted to see what I could do. I always thought I had interesting perspectives to add and I really wanted to get people's opinions on certain things. And we really were just discussing I, I, his story. I've known him for so long. I've known him since right after this whole ordeal and um, really it's just, it's, the more I think about it, the more I realize how incredible it is, the more I realize we have something so amazing here that can be shared and can be use within the community and and that's really just kind of where we we brainstormed and it was kind of ironic in some ways that on the first of the new year really is when we kind of sat down and said this is our name with 10 days later we were incorporated so it was really just the quickest we were just so excited um and and we're now an incorporated foundation and and i've been um, doing nonprofit work since yeah ever since i was sick you know i've been doing the miracle tie collection was kind of a collection that Joseph Bank had before I was in the hospital. They had a medicine that was underneath the microscope and mm -hmm. they put it on a tie and sold 100% and went to the hospital. The proceeds all went to yeah. the hospital. But when I was in the hospital, I um, kind of asked my doctors, like, you know, what can I do to help? I and mean, why are my friends, you know, passing away? I don't understand. And he said, you know, it's really all about money. And mm -hmm. as like a young child, you don't really understand that. But so mm -hmm. I, I kind of started drawing and told him that I wanted to like start selling them but Joseph Bank came to me and they were like well I want to put the your artwork on the tie and we'll make wow. we'll do that instead of, and so that became the new children's miracle network tie That's awesome and they started uh, yeah. doing a lot better with that and that became a whole new nonprofit that I've been a part of um, I've been doing change bandits children's miracle network and, and you've you've things, raised yeah. you've helped raise over five hundred thousand dollars for children's miracle network and yeah. Um, his speech alone, uh, we went to this Tigerthon event at his, um, at Towson University, and because of his speech and because of his, his friend's speech, other friends that he now knows through the Cancer Survivors Network, because of their speeches um, and, and inspiration, they helped double last year's total um, to about $40,000 in one night, with 20 last year, 40 this year. And another uh, really big part about us starting this. now is Johns Hopkins is just about to open their new children's center. And mm -hmm. their children's center will have, you know, the accessibility to the internet and wow. the, the computers and mm -hmm. the Xbox that we need to be able mm -hmm. to connect the children to their heroes. Mm -hmm. So that's a really big part of us starting when we did, and absolutely that, that kind of fell into place for us. But um, that's, I think, a really big part of us, you know, starting now. That's great. And I think that'll help us, you know, start on the rise and connect with other hospitals and things like that. Wow. Now, how are you guys? 
say different from the Make-A-Wish Foundation? Sure, um, I, can, I can touch on that. So the Make-A-Wish Foundation will grant any wish to, to any child. Um, I've seen, I've read a little bit and seen that movie theaters or um, maybe a yacht ride out. Um, and usually too, if you meet up with a hero, it's usually an athlete. And what you do is you go to a football game. Maybe you get to throw the football with Tom Brady. It's a much bigger endeavor mm -hmm. that's done at a much more individual. I don't want to say individualized, but but you can do less cases per year. Well, I've Ours been a part of the Children's Miracle Network. They they reached out to me when I went through um, chemotherapy and pancreatic cancer, and they they sent me to Florida for my birthday because it was kind of like my favorite thing. I always wanted to go meet Chip and Dale as a, I mean, as a little kid, you mm -hmm. kind of want to do these things. And so I got to go out there with my family and spend like a, a week or so in Florida and that was a great time for us. And um, I, they also reached out to me again after I went to my, I had, um, I think it was internal bleeding and they, I had, um, they sent me a TV. That was another one of my wishes that they granted for me. So they, they do more like selective wishes and we are more kind of personality uh, individual and we want to kind of give them motivation yes. whereas they want to kind of give you but something in, in a, it's as in a more doable way i mean this is the the overhead for for something that we're talking about is so low you don't, you're not traveling you're not using any expenses you the child can stay in the hospital where it's the probably the safest place you know infections uh things can come up and they can just be right there with this could be the ipad right here and i could be connected 100 percent to michael jordan right now um, which is just mind blowing, and it's still easy for the athlete on the other end, just like we were saying earlier. Yeah. So that's how it's really a 21st Michael century Jordan thing that that is m much more just yeah, m you know, brings you really into the 21st century. These these technologies to, to connect children. Yeah, and how good does it make for any hero to you know help or influence a child's life so that he is doing better and he can see that absolutely, and he knows that he's a part of that. I mean, absolutely. That, that makes anyone feel good. I mean, if I can do that, I know that that's why I'm doing this, mm -hmm. because it's making me feel like I can do that. So I know that that's why Pullman and a lot of the Dickinson community wants to do that, because they want to be a part of something that can help other people. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a big part of this. So we want to ask about this book you have in your hand. Yes. Um, so this book is called Here Is My Hope. Um, this book was written um, fairly soon uh, after Grayson's whole ordeal and, and there's a he's a whole chapter devoted to him in here and it's just it's so mind-blowing if you ever get a chance to read it's called here is my hope um, Randy Henderson and Richard Mar uh, Merrick created this book and it really just goes into detail but there's videos online too from the Baltimore Sun he's been in a lot of it's, press it's a Baltimore magazine of, he, a lot of incredible stories you know some are tragic some are incredible. yeah and there's and just a lot of details that we we can't go into now that written very well and um, that my story is the first chapter, and it was soon after, like I think 1996 or something, that when I went through all my surgeries, mm -hmm. that they, that Brandy Henderson wrote the book, and um, but she wrote I think the first half, and Mark wrote the second half. Wow, but it, okay. it's it's a great stories, and I think there's like ten or so in there. Yeah, so it's a great read. Well, we thank you guys so much yeah. for coming. Um, this is an unbelievable foundation that I never knew about. I'm so glad that, you know, we have that contact here at Dickinson. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and now that it's known more um, here, and it's just such a great thing that you guys are doing. Um, do you guys have a website or something that you can tell? Yeah, absolutely. I would say um, check out our website, inspirationalmedicine.org. Um, we recently uh, put something up. We have something awesome up there right now, and we have a new website in, in design right now. We have some new programmers that we hired on board. So we're continually moving in that direction and our Facebook page, Facebook.com, Facebook like uh, Inspirational Facebook, Medicine you know. on Twitter. Yeah, we have we have all of, all of those bases. So really check us out. Um, get in contact with me, inspirationalmedicine at gmail.com. Those are all ways. Thank you so much. Thanks again. again. Thank we appreciate you. your time. Yeah, have a great day.